Hey, 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 it's Eric the Thor here, straight out of Vikings, or straight out of the shower, rather. An INFJ here to talk to you about the difference between ENFPs and ENTPs. And now, without stereotypes and without needlessly complex cognitive function jargon, let's jump right onto it. These are my 10 questions to help you figure out if you are an ENFP or an ENTP. Question number one, are you an idealist? ENFPs, they are true at heart idealists. ENTPs are true at heart innovators. As an ENFP, you care about idealistic, impossible scenarios. You dream without worrying about how. You think, and you idealize, and you envision, and you see the best possible outcome, or a dream, or an idea, or something that just feels great and looks beautiful to you. And you don't think about the problems. You don't think about the issues of this idea, or how to realize it, or how to make it happen. You just think about how you want this, and how great this situation would be, and how amazing it would be. ENTPs, they're not idealists. ENTPs can find themselves doubting what ideology is best and what worldview works best. They can see the pros and cons of any political stance. As an ENTP, you can identify both with the rich and the poor. You can see that everyone can and has their benefits and their issues to work on. When you hear an impossible idea, you go, uh-huh, but how? Your mind starts spinning, you start questioning, you start criticizing, you start saying, but that's not possible. And if you want to do that, then you first have to do this. And you've got to see that that's not going to work, right? And so that's the core difference at heart, NF or NT. As an NF, you're going to feel the strong pull towards the impossible and you're going to try to get there no matter what, and you are not going to worry as much about how you're going to get there. You're just going to push with sheer force of will. Question number two. Do you have introverted feeling? ENFPs, they have introverted feeling as their secondary function. ENTPs have introverted thinking as their secondary function. Introverted feelers, they are most focused on themselves, their own identity, and their own feelings. ENFPs, you know with your gut what is right and wrong. You trust yourself. You know who you are. And you have a strong feeling or instinctive feeling of who you are and what you want. That means it's easy for you. You just feel this is right. This is what I want. This is good. In the moment, you can feel it. And it's relative for you because from situation to situation, it changes. You can feel that in this situation, I want this. And in that situation, with that person, I prefer that. You can feel in different moments relatively, okay, I'm more like that there and I'm more like that there. And that can make it difficult when you're taking personality tests. ENTPs, you have feelings too. Sorry to say it, but you do tend to approach your feelings more intellectually. You want to analyze and figure out your emotions. You need to get yourself. And so you spend a lot of time processing your own feelings and decisions. But why am I angry? Or why do I care about this? And why does this upset me? realistically, rationally, why? <laughs> I don't understand. So ENTPs, they like to explain themselves to themselves. And they're good at explaining themselves. A lot of the time when I watch ENTP videos, I hear ENTPs talk about themselves and their emotions with extremely high self-recognition. When I hear ENFPs talk about themselves, it's more matter of fact. This is what I feel. Dot. When I hear ENTPs talk about themselves, it's I don't know what I feel, but I can tell you why I feel it. <laughs> and that's the conundrum of these two types. And now, before we get into the next point, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you feel like it, why not change the speed to 1.25 or 1.5? I won't judge. It's all okay. Question number three. Do you have introverted thinking? ENFPs, like I said before, it can be difficult for you to explain yourself to other people. And sometimes you might end up feeling a bit misunderstood because of it. You can know, you can express yourself and share your feelings, but sometimes you just feel like you're a bubbling crazy person. People look at you and they don't get why you care so much about this political cause or why it's so important for you to do something or to say something or to uh, be at a certain place. And so uh, people can struggle with that about you. And that's because you don't have introverted thinking. You don't spend a lot of time analyzing your decisions and feelings. You just feel them. And a lot of time that can cause issues because sometimes you need to explain yourself to other people and you need to explain your thought process. But a lot of time 
there is no thought process because you are an action-oriented person and we're gonna get more into that later. ENTPs, you are introverted thinkers and that means a lot of time you spend a lot of time listing pros and cons. You think about things more critically and you can see the flaws and issues with everything and everyone. It's easy for you to think about what you dislike about a person or what you can see that the person struggles with. You can analyze people pretty accurately at times and often it's easy for you to predict people's behavior. I see ENTPs constantly approach things logically and that means they are always arguing back and forth to different sides and viewpoints. Sometimes people think that what you're arguing for is what you actually believe, but that's not always the case. A lot of time you're just fishing for information. You're trying to see how other people would respond to different arguments and what they would say back and how they would analyze the situation that you thought about in depth. ENFPs, they can be, because they're not strong in TI, a bit too trusting, a bit too forgiving, a bit too rose-colored glasses. That means you see the best in everybody, but you don't realize that sometimes people have bad motives and bad intentions, and that can cause you to sometimes get hurt. ENTPs, you can be a bit too cautious. You criticize people too much. You stay too much on the defensive, and you can find it hard to relate to and connect with people because you're so aware of the potential consequences of your actions and how connecting with a person could leave you to getting hurt. Question number four, do you have extroverted thinking? Extroverted thinking is the process of action, strategy, and getting things done. It's really about scoring and saying, I'm gonna get the highest result. I'm gonna do a good on this project. I'm gonna push through and make a good effort at this. ENFPs, they're very action-oriented types. ENTPs are very analytical types. It's more likely for an ENTP to say, hey, the light bulb is broken, we need to fix it. And it's more likely for an ENFP to go, okay, I'm gonna go and buy a light bulb. <laughs> and often the ENFP's mode of action is just to take action. And that means uh, how they process things and how they process logic is very swift and very decisive. They will seek out and to seek an outcome and a solution to a problem immediately. And they don't need to think about it or analyze it too long. ENTPs, you like to analyze decisions and so you don't just jump into something. If you uh, think about something, you want to process it first. You want to make sure that you figured it out and you thought about the strategy before you try it. You're not just going to go and jump in and trial and error it. You're going to process it and you're going to think about it and you're going to see if it works before you do it. That's not to say that you can't be action oriented and that you can't spring to action. Certainly compared to an INTP you can. but more often as an ENTP, you want to figure it out first and then you want to do it. And often you're capable of both. Question number five, do you have extroverted feeling? ENTPs, what I found out about you is that you are very image conscious. You think a lot about how other people perceive you. You worry about how other people think about you. You worry about upsetting people or saying the wrong thing or offending others. A lot of time I see ENTPs, they're very good at presenting themselves in a certain light. As an ENTP, it's easy for you to compose yourself if you need to at work or with other people in order to create harmonious relationships. It's not that you like to do it. Honestly, you would prefer if you could just bake your mind and say whatever you want. But a lot of time as an ENTP, you know that sometimes I'm going to have to tread carefully around people. I'm gonna to have to be diplomatic and it drains me, but I'm gonna do it. ENFPs, they're interested in from the point of extroverted feeling because ENFPs, they struggle to adjust or compromise themselves to fit in. ENFPs often say and do whatever they feel without thinking about how they are perceived and that can get them at odds with society and with other people. They can come off as too dramatic or crazy or silly because they don't think about how they come across. Where an ENTP tends to put out a pretty polished expression to the outer world, the ENFP can have messy hair, they can be a bit uh, disentangled, they can be a bit uh, chaotic, they can be a bit late, and a lot of time it's because they're not necessarily acutely aware of extroverted feeling. They're not necessarily thinking about relationships or uh, connection or presentation. Sure, they can think about it, but a lot of time you don't. Another interesting thing with, with extroverted feeling is ENFPs tend to be a lot worse at predicting human behavior. 
ENTPs tend to pretty accurately be able to predict what people are going to say and do. ENTPs, they can kind of figure out what makes other people tick and what makes other people go. And so ENTPs, they see, okay, how do I get this person to do what I want them to do? How do I get this person motivated to do what I need them to do? ENTPs, they're pretty good at convincing other people. And they can think about how to say things and how to get people to want to do <laughs> what they want you to do. <laughs> ENFPs, uh, they are pretty, uh, what should you say, pushy about what they want. I can see ENFPs get pretty aggressive about their values and they can really corner a person. They can really push a person to the wall and they be like, you have no right to speak on this matter. You know nothing. You're not good enough. You don't understand this. You're not uh, involved in this the way I am. You don't feel the same way I do, or you're not a good person, and therefore you're not gonna get this. And so ENFPs, they can have pretty strong black and white values. ENFPs are very passionate people, and to some extent this can be good, because at a political organization, you can build passion for something that's very important. You can get people very fired up. You can get people in a really good mood to fight for or set up for what's right. However, um, in more pragmatic situations where you need to work together with others and where you need to balance out different sides and viewpoints, you're going to have struggles. You're going to have people that don't get you and that stand in your way and that refuse to move. And a lot of time working together with people like that can be difficult. Question number six, who are you at work? For an ENFP, it's very important to feel connected at work. You need to sh share the values of the company or organization and it can feel very disheartening when the workplace doesn't meet your values and needs. If you don't relate to or feel connected to an organization, you're probably not going to stay there for long. ENFPs, they are people that worry a lot about their performance at work. They're stressed about projects and completing tasks and getting goals met. They stress about targets and deadlines. They think about you know, how to get there in a certain time to reach a certain target or goal or to hit a certain level of sales or success or accomplishments in what they do. And that's something they worry about and work very hard at. So at work, ENFPs can be very decisive and very productive and very prolific people. I see ENFPs just checking through tasks rapidly. They are very fast paced and they're very focused on doing things and getting things done. When I look at ENTPs in work, I notice people that uh, really need a company where they have freedom. ENTPs tend to focus more on the need for freedom than the, the connection to the company's values. It's more important for an ENTP to feel that I can say and do whatever I want and I can work on important tasks that are challenging and stimulating to me. I need to feel that I can grow at this company, that I can work on myself, that I can improve myself and that I can be challenged and stimulated. And if I'm not stimulated by work, I'm gonna go look somewhere else. As an ENTP, you can focus on work with fitting in. It can be difficult for you as an ENTP to connect to your workplace and your managers and superiors. Sometimes as an ENTP, it stresses you out to deal with people and often that's your biggest stress. It's not meeting deadlines, it's getting people to do what you need them to do. Getting people to agree to what you think is best without coming up as arrogant or superior intellectually. Sometimes people can be a bit thrown off by your intelligence. They might not be able to follow up with your line of thought and reasoning. They might not get you or your ideas. And getting people to get you, that's really taxing. And that's the ENTP's biggest struggle at work. Number seven, what does the ENFP lifestyle or ENTP lifestyle look like? In comparison, the ENFP tends to have a more chaotic, carefree and easygoing lifestyle. ENFPs can jump from hobby to hobby, from task to task. In one moment they might be interested in something and in another moment they might be interested in something else. ENFPs, they're pretty fast paced people, so they can jump into arts class or go to a museum or just try something out that they just read about two minutes ago. ENFPs are spring to action types and so it's fun for them to just try out an error. Do I like this? What do I like about these people? Who can I connect with there? Who are interesting here? Who do I like about uh, in that organization or in that moment or in that nonprofit? So ENFPs are often out trying out and experimenting, meeting new people, doing new things and just seeing how it feels. ENTPs, they're more analytical. Once again, the ENTP spends a lot more time going should I, what kind of hobby should I get? Or what kind of interest should I uh, have? Would I potentially, hypothetically like this? 
And a lot of time the ENTP spends more time on the drawing table. The ENTP likes to hide behind blueprints, just analyzing and writing out, okay, so in this situation would I enjoy that? And in that situation might I enjoy this? An ENTP might be more interested in finding the best pub or bar in a city and really going over all the different options that are available to find the best on possible. The ENFP might be more like, oh, let's try that one, that one looks cute, and then they will go, no, I don't like it, okay, let's go to that one instead. And so that's the difference in their lifestyle. The ENFP will inevitably seem a bit more chaotic because they're constantly in, jumping from thing to thing. The ENTP is a bit more perfectionistic because the ENTP wants things to be perfect. They want to find the best place, the perfect hobby, the perfect music instrument, the perfect uh, thing to do that really is 100% satisfying and challenging and stimulating. And sometimes that can keep them from enjoying what they have in front of them. Question number eight, how do you communicate with others? As an ENFP, you, honestly, you tend to come off as quite humble. You don't come off as uh, the most well-read or smart or intelligent person when discussing a topic. You come off as humble and open-minded and accepting. You see different viewpoints and you can think about things from different perspectives and you enjoy reasoning and discussing things. ENTPs, you can come off as a bit arrogant. You like and enjoy debate and competition. You like seeing who can come out on top in an argument. You like testing and poking and prodding. Why do you like that? Why do you feel that way? And isn't that stupid? And so as an ENFP, when you talk to people, what you'll see is that, okay, I care more about building relationships and bridges. I want to connect with people. I want to build a relationship with people. I want to understand people. So I want to hear why they feel a certain way or why they're attracted to a certain political viewpoint or what kind of things they like and dislike. And what they would enjoy in different hypothetical situations. As an ENTP, you like to test people's wit. Are that, is that person smart and intelligent? Can they keep up with my reasoning? Are they able to follow my arguments? Do they understand and get what I say? Do they have their facts straight? Do they understand things? Can they uh, figure things out fast enough? And for you, the intellectual stimulation is most important. For an ENFP, it's more important seeing that the person's heart is in the right place. Do you, are you a good person? Do you want the right things? Do you have the right sense of morality? And do you, is your heart in the right place? Question number nine. How are you in relationships and with intimacy? What I've found is that ENFPs are pretty open-minded and intense. They can very quickly get personal with another person. They share about their personal lives and experiences. They really connect with people emotionally. They are focused on the emotional bond with another person. And they are less guarded about themselves. They are more likely to get open and to connect with and try to connect with other people. When looking at ENTPs, I see ENTPs as far more guarded and analytical. ENTPs are slow to open up to others. ENTPs don't share their innermost feelings with people unless you are really close and that unless they feel truly understood by you. As an ENTP, it's more important for you to feel comfortable around another person. You really need to feel comfortable around another person, really secure. You really need to feel like this person has your full trust. As an ENFP, you can be too trusting. You can sometimes find yourself opening up to the wrong people and having your secrets spilled or ending up sharing too much or ending up uh, being rejected or pushed away because people can't handle it. And a lot of time when building relationships, ENFPs uh, can be too positive in the beginning. They like people almost instantly. They just feel like, oh, this person is a great fit for me. This person I can relate to and connect with and understand. And this person is fascinating and different. And sometimes as an ENFP, you're attracted to broken people people with struggles and hardships. And so you get kind of into it and you get kind of lost in that and you fall lost in their brokenness. And you can find brokenness beautiful. You can find it fascinating and compelling, but you can also miss that this brokenness has a dark side. And sometimes broken people are not just broken emotionally or in the sense that they might need help and support, but also they can be broken in the sense that they, uh, are malignant people and that they are toxic or hurtful or that they will drain you of your energy and emotions. So no matter what you and who you connect with, find people that give you energy, not people that just take energy. Finally, question number 10. 
Are you an innovator? As an ENFP, you see the best in everyone and everything. And that means to you, nothing is broken. A puzzle piece out of place is not for you a misplaced puzzle piece, but art. Everything is in the end down to individual expression. Everything works, and everything can be experienced and enjoyed and appreciated for what it is. As an ENFP, you can find pleasure and enjoyment in the things that are out of place and weird and messy. A messy room to you is not a messy room, but it's a place full of secrets on the floor and interesting things and gadgets and fun things and passions and hobbies and interests. Everything has a story. As an ENTP, you're a fixer and problem solver. You see issues in everything. You can see problems with every idea, with every viewpoint. To you, a messy room is a place where everything has been misplaced. Why is that there? Why is that there? Why shouldn't it be there? Can this be organized in a better way? Can this be done differently? Why did things get messy in the first place? Is there something you need to change in your habits or lifestyle to make sure that you are more clean and more organized? As an ENTP, you think about things just from those questions of how do I make things better? How do I make things more efficient? How do I make things work? So as an ENTP, you really analyze systems and you are more systematic and system oriented. There is no good or bad system. There is no necessarily communist or liberal utopia, but there are just smart and stupid ways to do things. And that means a lot of time intellectually, you can connect with both the left and right, but you don't really fully connect with either of them because to you, it's about whether somebody is competent or not. Are you a competent leftist with smart, well thought out ideas and proposals or a stupid leftist that just lets your heart rule everything and ignores what is realistic or feasible? Are you a smart right wing person or liberal? Or are you a stupid right wing or liberal? And that's most important to you, whether something is smart or stupid, whether something is right or wrong. So this was my video about ENFPs and ENTPs. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more about ENTPs, I really recommend two YouTubers. First for ENTPs, check out Melissa Talks. She has 10 things about ENTPs. The link is in the description below. Then check out uh, Heidi Preeb Struggles. Only ENFPs will understand the link also below. Finally, thank you to all my patrons and subscribers. I appreciate having all of you and I hope to talk to you in the next video.